Hi everyone, tonight we have a 2019 A2159, which is actually a very new machine in here with no power. There, the board is pretty much pristine. There is no liquid damage. There is no drop damage. The machine is pristine. So this can happen for a number of reasons. Um, a, lot of, a lot of things we see on these new machines are actually the T2 chips corrupt, corrupting themselves. So you'll do an OS update and then all of a sudden your device won't turn on and sure enough it's the T2 firmware. Uh, you bring it into the Apple Store and you get a repair quote for thousand bucks for a new motherboard, and that's simply not the case because you could reprogram it. However, that's not the case with this device. Um, went ahead and looked at it because normally when a customer says no liquid damage, it is indeed liquid damaged, and I found no liquid damage. So let's go ahead and look at this board and see if we could figure out which, what's wrong with it. You know, the user is just using it one day and all of a sudden just off, nothing. Um, so let's go ahead and have a look at the board and see if we could figure out what the heck happened to this thing. So let's go over to our microscope. And let's have a look at this motherboard. So this board is a little bit different, um, but it does share uh, several design characteristics from the A1708's motherboard. Um, A1708, and it's almo this one almost has a little 4924 in it. This is the new CD3217 chips, which are it's an all-new USB-C controller. Let's look around this board. TPS51980, that's the same. ISL9240, it's the same. Charge controller. This board looks, I mean, you could tell there's just no liquid damage. Even on the other side, there's nothing here. It's very, very clean. Looks like it's very well taken care of. There's no dust buildup. Um, it, it looks great. You know, it looks great so far. So, let's look over here. And hmm, wonder what this is. So, normally you see this and you think, well, someone's, someone's worked on it. This is flux. This looks like flux. Not the case. So, what happened here, this is actually the remnants of a tantalum capacitor exploding. Now, sometimes a tantalum capacitor is just going to explode. It happens. It's part of capacitors. Sometimes they just blow up. So, this is most likely going to cause our no power issue. So, we're going to go ahead and just check for a short. Sometimes they blow their shorts out. I've seen some boards that have worked, died, and then worked again simply because the capacitor just exploded. But this definitely blew up. So, short, dead short to ground, and this is going to be on, I presume, PP Bus G3 Hot, which is the main 12 volt rail for the system. Um, but I don't have a schematic or board view for this, so there's really no way of saying. But I'm 99% sure this is going to be on PP Bus G3 Hot. So, to me, it looks like it's this cap right here. One thing we could do is plug it in and uh, look at our thermal imager and see if anything gets hot in that area so we can go ahead and do that. We know it's going to get hot, we just want to localize which um, cap it is. So this is always hard to see on camera and it may not actually um, even get to the point, yeah it's not even going to get to the point of getting hot. The IS, the charge controller sees it's pulling too much of a load and it shuts itself off. So let's go ahead and take off this one cap and let's see if our short resolves. So many people don't put these caps back, I like to. Um, it's not really a big deal if you don't put every single cap back like this, but this one is kind of important since it's near the CPU controller, so we're going to go ahead and replace it. It's a 330 microfarad. We're actually going to replace this one too. So this one, you can see this one was cracked right here after it's hot. It's cracked and actually welded to the board. There we go. Another concern here is going to be internal trace damage. So we want to avoid that. We don't want to have any internal trace damage. And it looks like it just got really hot. This area got burning, burning hot. But I think, think it survived. So let's go ahead, check for a short again. And one lead on ground. And we now have we still have 0 0.3 ohms right there, so that's no good. We still have a short to ground. 
So we might have another cap that blew up here, or we have a short under here. So there's two things I can do. What I could do is take off another cap. I'm going to go for this one next because I see a little bit. Maybe this one exploded too. And if that does not work, I'm going to go ahead and inject voltage on this line and see if anything gets hot. This area looks okay. I don't think our charge controller took a hit. What about on the other side of the board? Was there MOSFETs or something right here? Nope. Everything right here looks okay. So let's go ahead and remove this other one. And this one is a 332. Just making sure. Check again. And 600 ohms to ground. Zero ohms to ground. So this one was fine. Zero ohms to ground. Okay, at this point, I'm going to have to inject a little bit of voltage into the board to see what exactly is getting hot. So this is in an area where this is powering the CPU V core circuit. Um, my guess and my suspicion is, is that we have a short to ground under here in this area of the board. It just look doesn't look right to me, and I think we are, our issue is going to be under here in the board. Hopefully, we'll be able to cut that out and avoid um, too much internal trace damage. But we're going to see. I'm going to go ahead and inject maybe one to two volts into that area and see exactly what what gets hot on the board. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and solder our wire right here. We're going to wait for our iron to get hot. I'm going to make sure the wire isn't touching anything else that it shouldn't be. And we're just going to tack it down here. It doesn't have to be a really good join. Just tack it down there. I'm going to get a little more solder on here. We don't want to go high in the voltage because in case we have a short to a CPU line, we don't want to pump 12 volts into the board and have that go to the processor. So we're going to stay low at 1.3 volts. And if nothing gets hot, we can go up a little bit from there. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and turn on the power supply. We're going to connect the ground lead. Where is it here? Here it is. We're going to connect the ground lead to ground. And instantly it is pulling 5 amps. So I'm going to go on the thermal imager, which you guys will not see because I have to look at the small screen. I'm going to see what's getting hot. So far, nothing is really obviously standing out as getting hot. It's just a general area. So that tells me, especially pulling at 5 amps, we should see something getting considerably hot, and we're not. So what that kind of tells me is it's um, very indicative of an internal short in the PCB. Alright, looks like maybe our heat sink is getting hot. It's hard to tell because we did pump a lot of heat into the board. It's hard to tell if our heat sink is getting hot from um, our previous work or if there's something wrong with the CPU. 85.3. Hmm. Let's go ahead and take the heatsink off and see if the CPU gets warm. That's a concern. So let's we're going to go ahead and do that now. So that would probably mean the board is unfixable if, if um, the CPU is shorted like that because that would mean that our CPU saw 12 volts. And as many of you know, uh, 12 volts is not good for the CPU if um, you're new or you're not a technician, your CPU usually runs on one volt, and if you give it 12 volts, it's not going to be very happy. So, think of it like this. It's kind of like having a 110 volt light, light bulb, then you have like a lightning strike, and a thousand volts goes into your light bulb, and it explodes. It's kind of the same thing for the CPU when you ram 12 volts into it. It just dies. And the CPUs are soldered, so it's not its not the fact that they're soldered that makes it hard to replace. It's the fact that it's going to be th tied to the T2 chip, and the, the chip is hard to get. So heat sink is off. A lot of times what you'll see on the CPU is excel itself will be all cracked and destroyed. Um, let's clean the thermal paste off to make sure that's not the case here. I hope it's not. And it's not. It's very obvious when that happens. 
So I'm just going to clean it off a little bit. And now I'm going to kick on my power supply again. At 5 volt, at 5 amps, I mean, something should get, be getting burning here. And it is not our CPU, which is very good. Or is it? I don't think so. I don't see anything getting considerably hot there. So I think we're okay. But nothing is really getting too hot here. So what I'm going to do is... You know what? I wonder if that's actually a CPU V core. No, CPU V core, we wouldn't be pulling 5 amps. I was thinking, well, maybe the capacitor's on a CPU V core line. But to check for that, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to plug the board in and see what it does. So our two caps missing is not critical. I want to see if anything changed because sometimes, yeah, sometimes it will be a CPU V core line or something that has a shorted cap and you inject a little voltage in it and it will do that. And 20 volts. Okay, we weren't getting 20 volts before. We're not at booting current yet. We're at 0.3 milliamps, 0 0.17, 0 0.65. Hmm. This may be working. 0 0.44, 0 0.32. Okay, so this very well may be working. So, like I said, we didn't do not have a schematic or board view for this device. So, it's quite possible that this was on a CPU line. So a CPU line is going to have naturally low resistance to ground, and that will cause that. That's why we went with a low voltage, like I said. If you don't know what you're injecting into, or if you're afraid that there is a short downstream going to your CPU, then you're always want, going to want to use a low voltage so you don't damage the CPU, and that's why we did that. So before I put these caps back on, I just want to do a quick test in the enclosure. So we're going to grab the enclosure, and we're just going to do a really quick test to see if the machine boots normally, and I think it will. And then we can go ahead and replace those caps. Would I use the machine long term without these caps? Absolutely not. But a quick test will be fine. Okay, and sure enough, look at that, we have an Apple logo on the screen here. So this was likely cap on the CPU vCore line. How that happened? It just happened. Um, there was likely no um, no uh, internal spike or anything that caused that. It could be a, it could be poor circuit design. So I will say that a poor circuit design can cause tantalum caps to pop. We don't know that for sure. Could just been a, a bug cap um, happens. But this is booting. It's probably going to freeze. It's probably going to freeze on me because those caps are in the CPU V core line. So basically, what those caps are going to be for is for smoothing. So we're going to have our CPU V core regulator sending out one point something volts. It could be anywhere from from 0.6 volts to 1.8 volts depending on CPU load. So what that cap is going to help do is kind of act as a little battery to fill up and take that load off the circuit. So let's say, let's say um, our CPU is just doing normal, like just barely anything, and then you put a big workload on it all of a sudden. Um, normally what we're going to get is a dip in that voltage. So if you're at like 1.8 volts and all of a sudden you go under a sudden load that might drop down to 1.4 volts or something and that cap is there to kind of keep that voltage smooth and doesn't so it doesn't drop out if it drops out rapidly when the cpu is under load like that you're probably going to get like a random crash or something so that's why that cap is there that's why it's not harmful to run it without it but that's why we're going to put it back so i'm going to take the board out again and we're going to find a couple caps and we're going to replace it and this board will be done put some fresh thermal paste on it clean up our flux and it is ready to go back to the customer fixed so, this machine may have actually been under warranty, but warranty does not really mean anything right now when everyone is closed. So, 330 microfarad caps, let's find some. The caps aren't board specific. I get questions like this, well, where can I find caps, where can I find caps? And the answer is donor boards. You just have to look for them. You will find some for sure. Okay, I found a couple on a different model donor board, 2018 MacBook Air. So let's go ahead and switch over back to our microscope camera and go ahead and replace these. So first thing we're going to want to do is clean up this area because it exploded, for lack of a better word. So we're just going to put some solder down as usual. Just clean up all that junk.
We don't really need to overdo it on the flux for these caps, so what's on there from the solder is probably fine. We're going to go ahead and take them off the donor board. Try not, so this is something, a lot of times when you heat up a tantalum cap, you'll hear a pop. You can use that cap, but I prefer not to. To prevent it from popping, heat from far away and slowly move into it. Um, you don't want to cause them to pop like that. They won't necessarily short, but their performance may be degraded. So we're just going to move in from far away to slowly heat the cap so it doesn't uh, experience any thermal shock. A little pop is okay. It's not, not the end of the world. As long as it's not like bubbled up or anything, then you're fine. There's one. There's two. And there's three. That's pretty much it. We're going to go ahead and let the board cool a little bit, and then we're going to clean it with a little alcohol. We don't really want to put uh, cold alcohol right on the board as soon as it's as soon as you're done heating it. Again, thermal shock, but should be cool enough now. So we're just going to clean up that flux. It's okay if you leave a little bit, but I don't like to. I like to make sure everything is cleaned. They might ask, why not ultrasonic the board? Well, it's not really necessary for only a, only a little bit of uh, flux like this. It's really not necessary, so that takes a lot more time, adds a little bit of risk, so I try not to do that on boards that just have issues like this. And that should be good. Let's go ahead and reassemble it and then get this on stress test to make sure everything's okay.